This is the Laravel News Podcast, your one-stop podcast to find out about Laravel-related news, tutorials, packages, and more. Here are your hosts, Eric Barnes and Jack Frew. Hello and welcome to the Laravel News Podcast. I'm Eric Barnes. And I'm Jack Frew. Hello, everybody. How are you today? As a rhetorical question, as I know you can't answer. <laughs> so, I was going to say, so you you sound sick, right, Jack? Oh, man. I, I just went to the doctor yesterday after having this cold for almost two weeks, and he said that uh, I should really expect to like have it linger on for another four. Oh. So for another like two episodes, you get deep voice, Jack, which I probably could use to my advantage. Like, I should probably redo all of our intros now. Like, welcome to the Laravel News Podcast. You know, like the, the real <laughs> deep voice. But yeah. Uh, anyway, we've got, uh, I, I was thinking we're going to have nothing to talk about since 5.3 came out last week, right? Or last last episode. And uh, and here we are. There's all sorts of stuff out. So uh, looks like we've got Laravel 5.3.8, a new version of Spark, new version of Lumen, a new version of Vim, of all things, right? So. Uh, Eric, you want to tell us about some detail about this? What, uh, what went into 5.3.8? Tell us about that. Yeah, so 5.3.8 came out, uh, it would be last week, and uh, the new version basically focuses on uh, on the unit testing. It adds uh, fakes and mocks for, for all these different things like events and jobs and mail and notifications. So basically, it's just a, um, you know, a, a release to add all that in to, to make unit testing better. Um, and it's a simple upgrade, just composer update, and you get all the new features. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice little dot feature, uh, dot release with, uh, with new features on it. So it's exciting. Which, uh, which release was the LTS release? Was that 5.1? Yeah, that was 5.1, which is two years ago now. Okay. Right? So is 5.3 is five, also an LTS release? No, it's the LTS runs every three years. Okay, okay. So the next LTS should be scheduled for next year, but I believe, I could be mistaken on this, but I believe it runs in parallel with Symphony's LTS release. Yeah, so, that sounds about right. So it, it could be next year, it could be the, the year after. It just depends on kind of how that all works out. Yeah. So just last week, we talked about um, Mohammed. is it Syed? I think so. I joined Taylor, so he's working you know, for Laravel LLC now. And... It was funny because I think didn't didn't Taylor say that like, one of the first things he wanted him to work on was like Spark and Lumen, right? Yeah, and and he's already released them, so that that was yeah. pretty awesome. And I hate to say this, I've been sick, so I really haven't been paying attention. What what's new in Spark version two? What did they do? Do you know? Well, mainly, well, ba- basically, Spark version two and Lumen version uh, five point three is just upgrading them to the Laravel five point three components. So now um, everybody that was kind of waiting and couldn't upgrade to Laravel 5.3 because they were using Spark or Lumen, now they're able to. So I that see. was kind of the big thing. It was really no big no big new features. It was just upgrading everything to the latest components. Makes sense. Okay. So it's nothing new. Yeah. It's just a, a, a 5.3 compatible release. That makes sense. So now we're all yeah. back in the same family. And then is Lumen the same way? Right. Yeah, it is. Awesome. And then you know uh, this this text editor Vim, which is uh, I think uh, I think it's older than the universe itself, right? Like so, it came out with version eight, right? Y- yeah, that's what they said. It was version eight, and uh, it's the first major release of Vim in t- like ten years, and uh, it's it's that's just unreal. You know, if you think about it, how mu- how many people actually still use Vim, and how long it's been since it's had a, a major release? Yeah, the person that wrote that must feel pretty good about themselves. You know, like hey, I created this lasting thing. You know, yeah. And it's funny too. Like I I know over over time I've heard people complain about Sublime Text because that guy's kind of it's like you know he'll release a bunch of stuff and then he kind of goes away for a while and then he comes back and um you know that's nothing compared to Vim, right? Like you know, right? Yeah, and. Yeah, it's just I don't, I don't know. Vim's crazy. Have, have you ever actually like learned Vim and and try to make it your default editor? No, nope, nope. Don't have a tolerance for it. Don't care. You know, <laughs> just, uh, you, you know, it it goes into that like the whole 10x programmer thing. And I'm I'm not a 10x programmer, right? And I and I don't think I'm ever going to be. You know, it's not it's not a it's not a uh, it's not something that I measure myself by. You know, um, right. I I have uh, enough trouble trying to figure out overall logic and what should I be doing and how do I get these components to work that the efficiency in which I type 
is so like minuscule, <laughs> right? You, you know what I'm saying? Like it's yes. it's it's kind of it reminds me a little bit like we're we're starting to get there now with SSDs, but people were optimizing memory and they were optimizing CPU when the hard drive was this by far slowest component in the system. And it's kind of like, look, you know, there's there's really not much point in making a faster CPU if it just has to wait for data coming off the slow drive, right? So that's kind of me. It's, you know, when I do development work, it's it, it takes me some time and effort to figure out what I'm doing. And um, my my still my go-to tool, uh, which actually just expired for me now, is that uh, PHP Storm. Right, um, yeah. And I I like... I, yeah, I, in fact, I probably have to, I don't know, I guess I have to bite the bullet on that now, right? Because they, I was one of the last people that bought an upgrade, like, before they went to the subscription. So whatever version existed, like, at the end of my upgrade period, I get to keep like, forever, right? And right. then when you subscribe, you get to keep whatever version, uh, I guess, you start with, which will be the same one I have now. Um, but then you'll get some new updates and stuff like that. So now I have to decide if I want to do that, because I think it's, if I remember, there were some pretty big incentives financially to try to get you. Well, I, I say big incentives. They're asking me for my money, so it's not really <laughs> like it's one of those things. I used to work with a guy, and his wife was like a shopaholic, you know? And she would go to the store, and she'd buy all this crap, and she'd be like, I saved us so much money. And then he would look at her, and he'd say, how much money did we have to spend for you to save us all that money? You know what I mean, right? Because like you were not really... You're not really saving anything if you're spending, right? It's yeah, you know. that's right. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I've I've never I'm the same in the same boat. I've never actually sat down to learn Vim more than you know. I have like the five or six basic commands to where I can go in SSH into a server and and you know change a file around. Yeah, but, uh, but more than that, I just I just it just never clicked with with me, and I've, I've never really cared to even learn it or. Um, do anything like that but yeah it's it's kind of funny on the server the one that i've started using is nano have you ever used that i have not no so nano is nice because uh first of all it doesn't have those goofy two modes of like you know like in vim there's like a mode for moving the characters around and then there's a mode for typing it doesn't have that and then there's also a little menu across the bottom and it's not real great it's not like uh you know like a, let's put it this way that like old dos word processors had better menus than this thing does but at least it has like how to exit, you know, how to exit right. and how to save a file are like in the menu. So like, okay, I need to do this and I need to do this and then I'm out of here. Good. You know, <laughs> I do find that like the more I use PHP storm, I, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm starting to take advantage here and there of little, little features, you know, right. that right. kind of stuff like the, the ability to surround something with something, you know, like if you, you have something and you need to surround it in quotes or brackets or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Did uh, what did what did you use before PHP Storm? Jeez, you know the funny thing is, is I've been using PHP Storm since version one. Oh and wow! I, and I wonder how long that takes me back. Like that's, you know what I mean? Like that that takes me back a long time. Yeah. I I bet you, on the Mac side, because I still had a Mac back then. So I'm trying to think of what what year that puts me at. When did I? Uh, 2010 maybe or something. So not that long, I guess six years or something. I I used Coda for a while. Remember that program from uh, right, from yeah. Panic? That was uh, there was a guy that I used to follow, Chris Coyer from CSS Tricks, and mm-hmm. he had all these screencasts. And he always used Coda, so you know it's kind of like uh, people probably do the same thing with Jeffrey Way today, right? You know, you see him using a tool, so you're like, all right, I'm gonna go get that tool, you know. So got Coda and uh, and used that, but God, Coda had nothing like in the way of like auto completion or any of that stuff. And when PHP Storm one came out, and it was like this thing like would read your code and understood what your functions were, even if they weren't in the open file and stuff like that. It was like, Oh, this is it. Right. So, um, PHP storm was, uh, the current one Coda before I tried out one from the escapers called flux. Did you ever hear of that one? Uh, no, I don't think I've ever heard of that one. So let, let me backtrack a little bit. When I learned HTML, there was this tool called Microsoft front page, right? So this is going back a oh, while. Yeah. That's how, that's how I got started being a web working on the web was through front page. The nice thing about front page, and I feel like, I think Dreamweaver still does this, but I think that might be the only tool now, is front page had this kind of like visual designer that you could lay out junk on the page. And then at the bottom, there was a tab and you could click on the HTML tab and you could see what it was, right? So if you didn't know how to do a table and format it and all that stuff, you just drop a table onto the little pa- you know, the canvas and you hit the HTML tag and you could see how it was all structured. So that was my introduction to HTML. That's how I learned it, you know. Um, and this tool, Flux by the Escapers, not to be confused, by the way, with 
F. Lux, the 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 light, you know, the screen color changing tool, the one that removes the color blue at the end of the day. They have, they have the same name. Um, not to be confused with that, but anyway, this tool purported to kind of let you do the same thing, where you could drag things on the canvas and then see the HTML. But it, it's for me, it was a little bit too clunky. And um, you know, the other thing that's kind of interesting is. Like for the longest time, I, I was really struggling. Like I wanted a front page kind of tool for CSS. And then it, I think it just got to the point where it's just like, I inherently know enough CSS to get the basics done. And I can Google the rest faster than I can tinker with a tool, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it does. That's kind of my progression. I went front page, Dreamweaver, text, mate, sublime, and then PHP storm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. TextMate was big, right? TextMate was huge. And then it never, it was the same boat. It never got updated. You know what? Doesn't DHH still use TextMate? Yeah, from what I understand, he does. That's crazy. The thing that uh, that bothered me with TextMate is it didn't have like a full project, uh, like a quick file find. Oh, um, yeah. So you had to like buy this like $3 extension that would do it. Okay. And it, I don't know. It was always kind of clunky around that. But uh, yeah. but yeah, it was, I think... That thing had a lasting power. The TextMate did. And, well, uh, and I remember, like, there were so many people that would, like, you know, they would copy themes from TextMate and stuff like that. So, yeah. I, yeah. Well, you know, they even work in PHP Storm. You can use the the I've, TextMate themes. That's crazy. So, I, I think what happened there is, like, I used to be a Windows person full-time. Well, I think that's not the right way to word it. But I used to be a Windows end user. You know, that my, my home computers were Windows, and, and that's what I did. And I switched over to Mac. uh I don't remember exactly when. Might have been in like 2008, 2009, 2010, somewhere in there, you know. And and I, I should probably dig up the original receipt and see how long I've been a Mac user now. But um, I think TextMate's popularity was before I joined into that club. You know what I mean? Like it was probably was it around for OS X? Like not OS X, but like OS nine, maybe. Like it, was it that old? Is it uh, one of those kind of precursors to OS ten? I don't know. Uh, when was OS 9 and OS 10? I don't know. Do you even remember? 10, <laughs> I mean, you, you figure they've had yearly releases and they're on, you know, what what they're about to release uh, 10.12, so it's probably been 12 years. Okay. I don't think I was on Macs back then. I, I wasn't. I, was, I wasn't for sure, so. I'm trying to remember what year I actually got a Mac. It was uh, 2002 or, th- no, it might have been like 04 or somewhere in that range. Hey, by the way, the day we're recording this is, um, I guess, the day that the iPhone 7 goes on sale. Right? Mm. Um, are, are you, you going to get you one? I'm not. I'm not <laughs> going to get one. And I'm I'm curious because it's. I found at work that there's two different camps. There's people who are like, "This is the best thing ever. Great idea to get rid of the headphone jack." You know what I mean? And I'm like on the sidelines. I almost feel like an old geezer. I'm like, uh, I got like a lot of stuff that needs a headphone jack. Like when I drive in my car, I use the headphone jack for that. When I work out in the basement, I've got like an old speaker dock that, oddly enough, is a 30 pin connector. Right. And that doesn't work, so I need the headphone jack to connect my little, you know, my little uh, lightning thing in because that doesn't work, right? And I don't, I don't know. They're throwing an adapter in the box, but I, I don't want an adapter, you know. <laughs> somebody, somebody like sent a screenshot around at work. It was like, you know, you can use this new forty dollar adapter that'll split lightning out into two ports so that you can charge it while you use the eight dollar adapter to play the audio, you know. <laughs> and I feel like, or I could just use the phone I already own and not upgrade, right? right. So. I'm kind of like deep down inside. I'm kind of hoping that this thing is a flop so that they turn around and come like, basically, if you think about it, the reason we have bigger phones is because there was competition, right? Like their, the original phone was tiny and then Samsung came out with bigger phones and those sold well. And then Apple came around and said, okay, well, we'll come out with the, was it the iPhone six was the first one that got big. And then the six plus, you know, yep. it, it was actually really interesting to me because they couldn't even make up their mind, right? Like they couldn't decide like, okay, well, what size? So, well, just two, two of them, you know, so now they have three different size phones, you know, because of market conditions, I think. And I'm hoping that that happens with the headphone jack, that they bring that back. Oh, no, I don't think they'll ever bring it back. You don't think um, so? No, but I, I am excited for the camera. That's the only reason I want to upgrade is the the, I, the iPhone 7 Plus, you know, has the new better camera and all that. And because basically all my family pictures are taken with an iPhone. So, uh. So having the nicer camera would, is worth it to me to upgrade. So would you get the big one though? Yeah, I have the big six plus now. Oh, okay. I uh, I like I like the big one. Yeah, you know, I I wouldn't mind the big one from the screen size perspective, but it was so big and so heavy 
that I was like, yeah, I don't think I'd want this. I wouldn't want to walk around with something that big and heavy in my my pocket and stuff, you know. Well, so well, I don't really walk around, you know. I just sit at my desk all day. <laughs> I, I suppose, yeah. So yeah, so uh, I do know a lot of people are excited about the camera, and they've done a great job at marketing towards that, right? Like they know that there's a lot of people that it, it is their primary camera. I I feel like I don't even take that many pictures. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and you know, it's it's one of those things. I probably should take more than I do, but yeah, no, we I take we take bunches, and and then of course you know have them backed up to everywhere in the world. Um, but yeah, that's to me. I mean, I just always have the phone on me and the lugging a camera around is just annoying. So I'm not, I'm never going to do that. I remember uh, looking at like some kind of photo, I don't know, photo website, like a uh, camera website, like years ago. Cause I was, you know, looking for like an SLR camera. So I was looking at reviews and the guy said the best camera you have or the best camera in the world, as he put it, is the one that you have with you. Right. Yeah. Which is a great point, right? How many times, you know, do you go somewhere and the only camera you have is your phone? So, you know, cause that's with you at all times. Right. So I have like an SLR with one of those 50 millimeter, like 1.8, um, lenses that I, I use for doing like the, you know, the blurred backgrounds and things like that. Right. And then, you know, the iPhone does me for everything else, you know, but, um, yeah, I, it, it's weird. And the headphone jack thing, it's one of those things that like at some point in the future, the fact that they did that will benefit me. It just wouldn't be a benefit to me right now. You know what I mean? Right. Like right now it would, it would cost me a tremendous amount of money, right? Like, cause you, you figure you'd have to buy the wireless earbuds. That's 160. I might as well buy a brand new, you know, um, Bose, you know, uh, Bluetooth dock speaker thing, you know, for the basement. So there's another 160 bucks or whatever, right? You know, I probably would need to buy a new car cause you know, I, I can't use Bluetooth audio on my car. So, there's 30 grand, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so this little $700 phone is going to end up costing me quite a bit. So right now it's not the time, but, uh, but I think in, I was gonna say my, my car, that my car is so old. My truck is so old that it has a six disc CD changer and that's it. And a radio, I can't hook it in or do anything like that. No Bluetooth. Mine's got the six disc changer as well. And then, uh, it's got the radio. It has satellite, but I don't pay for that. And then in the dash, like in the council between the seats, there's a little uh, headphone jack that you can plug into, you know. So, uh-huh. you can, so See, I, I just, wish I had that. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what's really frustrating is that actually the car has Bluetooth, but it only works for calls. So like if the phone rings, it'll ring over the speakers and I can answer it using a little button on the steering wheel. But if I play like from my uh, my phone, then no, it doesn't work. So mm. Yeah. So, I mean, the good thing is, is that they will push the industry kind of like with flash, right? Like they didn't support flash and that kind of killed flash. You know, I don't know if we're better off without flash or not, but you know, somebody thought we would be, and now we don't have it. So is what it is. Right. So. Yep. For sure. Any other news? Well, the, I was going to say, so get, get lab, they announced kind of their master plan going, going forward. Um, they got another 20 million in funding. Um, and, and, it's nice because right after this, they, they announced that GitHub came out and announced kind of their um, future plans. And, and you can really see them competing now. Like um, one example is like on the issue trackers. They're moving to more of, I guess, what I would call a Trello style to where, you know, all your issues can be cards and you can drag them around and, and um, all these other new features. So it, it's nice to, to have these two competing against each other instead of having you know, kind of one being the monopoly and never, never updating anything. Yeah. We're all, all, we're all just kind of stuck on this antiquated system. So it's kind uh, of funny, right? That's two things we've talked about in one episode where competition has helped consumers, right? Yes, it always does. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of competition, do you have, uh, do you have competition on your internet service there, Eric, where you live? Uh, we didn't until uh, the last two or three months. Um, and what, and what has that competition brought you? How's your internet these days? So here, Used to, we, we would only have the option of doing Time Warner Cable and you could get like uh, like 100 gigs down or something like that. Um, and then Google announced they were coming to Charlotte. So with that announcement, uh, Time Warner Cable reduced their pricing and made everything faster. And now at and came in and they're offering the gigabit. Um, so basically now I have like three three choices and, and they're all much cheaper than what they were originally. So it's it's nice. Wow. Yeah. See, there's, you know, it's, uh, it's tough when, when businesses have monopoly, they, they, they overcharge and they underserve. Yeah. Anything else worth talking about? Next is, uh, Lara Jobs. Um, 
they're actually created a Laravel developer survey. <coughs> so um, go fill that out. And what we're going to do is just basically take all the results and put them into a nice post on Laravel News once once it's all uh, you know gone through and and looked at. So all that will be public, and basically it's just free for everybody to go fill out and and kind of get a uh, find out how everybody's using Laravel. Nice. That's pretty neat. And then another news item is uh, I've got some Laravel News t-shirts for sale through Teespring. Nice. Um, I'll have a link in the show notes if if you want to get one. There. What is the price? Um, you can get a t-shirt or or a sweatshirt. Are they are they going to be like ninety nine dollars? No, but they are twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. You can get four of them for the price of a ninety nine dollar t-shirt. Exactly. That is a but, bargain um, at any price. Yeah. The only the only downside is. I went through Teespring because I don't have the means to buy a bunch of them and to ship them out. But yeah. uh, international shipping is fairly expensive. So that is kind of the downside. I wonder if, it's I like wonder if there's... It's like Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. I, um, it's a small price to pay to support that's your right. favorite Laravel News website. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> right, so yeah. that's cool. Um, speaking of support, do we also have a uh, sponsor message that you want to tell us about, Eric? Yes, yeah, so this week we are sponsored again by Shippo, and uh, Shippo is the API um, and dashboard for all your shipping needs. They, uh, you know, if if you're selling products like T-shirts, you can integrate with Shippo, and you can create uh, get shipping pricing for through all the major carriers in one API call. Um, you can print shipping labels, you can do address validation, and they've also just partnered with uh, Stripe. So if you are a Stripe customer already, you can. Um, you can integrate Shippo's API, you know, you know, right through it all. So, um, so it's a, a very cool service. And and if you're shipping anything, definitely check the check them out. Awesome, awesome. We appreciate their uh, their support as always. Yeah. Oh, and also uh, today, Bootstrap version three on the issue tracker, they announced that they were not going to be doing any more development basically on Bootstrap version 3. Yeah, because they announced 4 for a, a while ago, right? So Yeah, but 4 is not out yet. It's still in alpha. So it's it's kind of, uh, there's kind of been a mixed reaction there. They said um, they have closed all the issues that were related to version 3. They're going to stop all work on version 3 and basically put all the development toward version 4 to try to get it moved out. So if you're using version three, you know, I guess you stick with it, but uh, version four will be where they're putting all of their focus at from now on. I see there's a new uh, new Angular website. It looks like version two of Angular came out this week as well. Yeah. When did this come out? Maybe, oh, maybe it was the last one. No, it was uh, two nights ago. Two nights ago. Yeah, so it just came out then. Yeah. So it's the, f- they, they call it the final release. Um, they said that, uh, you know, it's, I don't even know how long it's been in, in progress. I'm going to say for at least like, what, two years now? Since that annual ones came out, I, I remember when they announced it. Wasn't there a bunch of uproar because they said they were going to change it or something? Did, whatever happened with that, do you know? Yeah, I, from my understanding, it wasn't backward compatible with version one. So, and I don't know, you know, I kind of since View came out, I've kind of switched over to it just because it seems simpler to me. Um, right. So I don't, I haven't kept up with it if it's actually, you know, if they have an upgrade guide or anything like that. But um, but I know the version two did finally release. Hmm. Well. Be interesting to see how all that stuff plays out, right? I know that uh, a lot of people in the Laravel world really like Vue, and they've got a new release coming out, you know, probably any day now. And then Angular just came out with a new release, which I think Angular at this point is still probably far, far, you know, more implemented and wider known than Vue is. But, um, but Vue's been going, going up at a pretty good rate. So yeah, be interesting to see. Yeah, well, I was gonna say at least it, it helps Angular that they have that Google backing. But uh, yeah, that never hurts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, yeah, I would say Angular is bigger, but I, I don't know. Views, I like view. I like the simplicity. Yeah, yeah, it looked neat. I I, I love that demo at uh, Laracon. That was cool. Well, I, that probably wraps up our episode. Yeah. Anything else? I don't think so. Um, you know, it's uh, next week. We'll or next episode. You were telling me earlier that next episode will be our one year anniversary from starting this podcast. So so we'll we'll have a a, a birthday party next next time. That, that's right. Yeah, I'll have to send you like a Portillo's chocolate cake or something. <laughs> I still can't believe you've never been to Portillo's. That's never, like a, never heard of Portillo's. It's, it's like a birthright up here, you know. Yeah, never even heard of that. I, I will tell you, I have been uh, I have been increasing my consumption of sweet tea. 
So sweet. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my part to be more southern. So you're going to need to grab yourself some portillas to be more northern. I, I, I really don't think they have any anywhere around here. You're going to have to drive to one. It's, it's that simple. You can come. Uh, so I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to come to Chicago. Come to Chicago, or I heard they were opening one in Florida somewhere. So that's you know. Kind of down in your neck of the woods, sort of. Uh, Not really. Eight, but, eight you know, hours, yeah. <laughs> probably, probably closer there than it is here, but what are you going to do? Awesome. Well, uh, thanks again, everybody, for listening, and we'll see you again in two weeks for our one-year anniversary. Uh, certainly, if you have joined us since the beginning, we really appreciate you know you listening to the podcast and all your support and nice comments on Twitter. And uh, you know, as always, if you if you feel like being really nice, you can always leave us a review on iTunes because uh, they always say that's a big deal. So yeah, it definitely helps. Thanks, everybody. This concludes this episode of the Laravel News Podcast. If you like the show, please rate it five stars on iTunes. If you have feedback for the podcast, please email us at podcast at laravel-news.com. Thanks for listening.